So I will call to order the Northampton Planning Board uh, hearing for Thursday, June the 14th, 2018. Uh, we always begin these meetings uh, with public comment on anything that's not on the agenda. So that's what's something we're required to do. And then we'll move to, I'm uh, not seeing any or hearing any. We'll move to the seven o'clock item, a towed site plan for a towed car garage storage by Chad Willard, Reds Towing off Damon Road, uh, ID D 18 D 3 in Northampton. Is there a presentation? Well, it's just. If, you, if you'll just identify yourself. My name, my name is Chad Rupal. I'm a supervisor at Reds Towing for West Springfield, Mass. This is Ben Scott, who's operations manager for Reds Towing, also out of West Springfield. Um, so, so we're asking the city if we can put a storage lot um, here off of Damon Road. I think the address is Zero Damon Road. It's next to where the lane construction is. Um, and, what, <clears throat> and what we're asking is to put 35 to fit up to from 35 to up to 50 cars there. Um, our normal business um, hours of operation are 8 to 4:30 in the afternoon, and on the week Saturdays from 8 to 12. Um, there's no lights, there's no building structure, um, there's nothing that would affect any of the residents out of the River Run apartment complex. Um, so that's kind of what we're asking the city, um, what we could do. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> Why am I, I can't quite visualize. It's tucked away. It's, yeah, it's, it's like behind really River Run, you know, so going down to the water. Is, um, this is Damon Road there. Right. So you go in by the um, commercial uh, thing and right. on that driveway. Oh, right. Oh, down by where the, the rowing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. All right, okay. Right. It's just at 8 to 4.30 p.m. So our normal business hours are 8 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon, Monday through Friday, Saturday, 8 to 12. Okay. This lot is <clears throat> more of a drop lot. Um, we are being requested by the state police. Um, to assist on the highway further up and we're also being asked by the city of Northampton for their help for different reasons. Um, we are a AAA provider um, as well so um, we would be helping out in the city with those things. Okay when you say your your business is your hours are 8 to 4 30 but there could be activity there. Well we could drop a car off after, but there would be no foot pedestrian. So you're traffic. dropping it and you're leaving. Dropping it and leaving. Okay. Um, and so that could be 24 hours a day? That right? could be 24 right. hours a day. It could happen at any given time. Okay. If it works on the body Okay. Um, um, we do um, operate our yard in West Springfield, and it's similar. There is a condo complex behind us. We've been in that location since 58. Um, our trucks are quiet, and there's not much. Uh, I mean, I can tell you the person from experience towing cars for the police. We tow someone's car at 2 o'clock in the morning, they don't hear it. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> they, they're, they're, they're not loud and clunky like tractor trailers are right. and stuff like that. You know, they're yeah. smaller yeah. tow trucks. Yeah. Yeah. They're not like, there, there there I hear tow trucks every single night in Northampton, so oh, yeah. that's, what, that's why I asked. They're not like loud and obnoxious trucks with those loud jake brakes and, right, right. Um, you know, noise. But there is noises. some amount of noise. Right, there is, there is noise. So the, the summary says 35 cars. You indicated 35 to as many as 50. Up to 50, right. Okay. Where are these cars going now? Are they going to West Springfield? Or right now we're operating everything out of West Springfield. Okay. And we can't, we can't meet the ETAs um, for the state police high, further up on the highway up here running from West Springfield. Right. And we also can't assist the city with police towing with it. It gets to that point right. um, without having a storage yard here in, in the city okay. convenient to the citizens. So someone would have to be based at that lot then to be able to take the call? During the, well all the dispatching would happen still out of West Springfield. We run another lot in the same situation in Holyoke. It's, you know, it's a, a satellite like lot we call oh. it. You know, it's just a small so storage yard, all the calls come into West Springfield and they're dispatched through there. Um, there would be, have to be someone up here during the day yeah. to release a vehicle that was towed or something right. like that. So would they have, would there be a structure or would they just be idling or what's the? Pulling most of the paperwork is done 
what we deal with is insurance companies. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the, the insurance company comes out and they get all their paperwork out of the West Bank, their location. They may view the vehicle at the lot during the daytime hours and leave. We remove the plates off of a car and we deliver them to the customer or mail them to the customer once the insurance company gives us the claim number. Um, so there's very little foot traffic that we deal with in, in people. Um, you know, our biggest issue at Reds is safety. Um, so, you know, like Ben said, we can't make an ETA up here doing 100 miles an hour, it's too dangerous. You can't put a wrecked car in your truck and tow it from exit 24 all the way to Brexit Spring. It's too dangerous um, for the drivers and for the people on the highway. It's just, um, so the foot traffic is minimal. Yeah, so at this time, we wouldn't be looking, right? I mean, possibly in the future, um, maybe. But at this point, it would just, you know, driver would be there in this truck. Right? Um, you know, just do his paperwork right there, return right. it to West Springfield at the end of the oh. day. So this isn't where people go and they get their cars towed and they right. show up at a sign, they're like, oh my God, and then they have yeah. to go to this location and, you no. know, to get their vehicle. That's right. not how this is. Is, is the 100 by 200 the entire space, or is that just going to be the size of the lot? This is, this is where the size that we're going to use for the time being. Okay. It's, so it's not the entire property oh, no, that's no, there? No, no. Okay. 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 Or the entire lot that's there. No. no. But this, if this, it's it's for 100 by 200 now, so if they wanted to increase it, they'd have to come back. Is that correct? Um, well, I think you should specify what would be the trigger to come back. I think that makes sense because it's not that you might not want to consider it, but it may be that there's just more traffic there right, and you might want to look at other issues related to it. So I would suggest that you set parameters, you know, if you need to expand to a mm -hmm, different mm -hmm. area, bigger area, that, that that would trigger an amendment of the permit. Mm -hmm. And is there a, a spec on the fence? So the spec is six feet. It's a six foot chain link fence now and it has barbed wire on it. That's the current fence that's been there or however many years that property's been there. Mm -hmm. It's overgrown right there, so we want to clean it up. So this 100 by 200 fence is an existing fence? It's an existing fence. Yeah, right. yeah this is an existing property. Yeah, we, would, we would clean up around the edges, and then uh, we screen it. Just, you know, I was going to ask so you. Would, okay, so you would screen it? Yeah, screen yeah we would screen it so that from the road you wouldn't see, uh, okay. essentially, a junkyard, even though it's not you know, selling parts or anything. But. <coughs> um, would the screening be the slats or more like the wind, the, you know, the, the, like they use the tennis courts where it would be the slats. It'd be the, sl you'd have to go and do the slats. Yeah, right. After, okay. <coughs> yeah. Well, we, we would probably do it. Well, we would do it. We would definitely do the front side because that's what's visible to the road. The back side is lane construction and then Fenton, wherever he has back there. <laughs> I'll just tell you the suggested condition is that it's on all four sides. That would be fine. That's what would require. That's what required. And, and just to okay. just to the reason behind that is that that's a, a parcel that's on the market now for development oh, for okay. office industrial use. So yeah. we don't know what the abutters are right. going to mm -hmm. be. So it needs to be screened once that gets cleaned up and built. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what's required, and that's what we would do. Uh, how about signage or lighting or anything like that? Well, our, day, our daytime hours, there would be no required lights at night. Um, in the future, if things work in the city, um, then we would come back to the board and say, this is what we would like to do. Um, and at that time, address, address the issues. You know, there's a big highway light right there with a big green sign that kind of lights up everything on that, on that Damon Road. Um, you know, now, we wouldn't have lights. Our lights in our Holyoke yard, um, you know, there's a newspaper company behind us, and it's not really a residential neighborhood. But our lighting faces our impound; it doesn't face the public. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. At this point, we wouldn't require any lighting or signage. Um, I do not require that. No. Um, like you said, in the future, if things work out, we we were we'd be interested in. So can you just developing have, um, the property more. Just say a little bit more about that. Like, if things work out, like, what's the goal? The goal, the is, goal like, is to, to, to be run a profitable business up here and eventually you know develop that property maybe purchase it from or who we're going to rent it so from. would it be more like an earnings like where you would be picking up cars that are legally parked in the city and bringing them there no yes and no okay so, yeah so you tell me it's two yeah. it's two separate it's towing is a big huge wide area yeah so <clears throat> private property towing is earnings does a variety of everything in the city 
private property towing if you're parked out here for the police department you know they formally <coughs> work for AAA um, so that we do not do private property towing we don't do it in West Springfield I don't want to steal your car if you run to the store to get a gallon of milk and you park here and the property owner calls and says hey listen I got a car here not my deal you know what I mean that's the public that's not what we do yeah you know we're not car being <laughs> If you get into a motor vehicle accident and the city calls and says, could you please come and help us? You bet your bottom dollar I'm coming to help you. Okay. Yeah. So that's no. when you say if, all, if things go well. Right, right. Well, that's not the future, whether, or... whether it be this parcel or something about, of else available in the city. Right now, we're just looking at exactly what we're saying we want to do with that okay. property. We don't, you know, we don't even know if that's possible down the road, you know, to erect a building or whatever, but that's some, a bridge we cross down the road and probably have to come back and see okay. you all again. Yeah, and that's helpful just because, yeah, we don't know right. what you're thinking. But at this point, yeah. it would just be strictly a, you know, a, a ghost satellite lot. There's dropping cars um, that are towed from this area. Um, so just to elaborate a little bit, <clears throat> what we do at REDS is we do two different things. We do an environmental prep service. So if your vehicle is involved in an accident, it's leaking radiator fluid, oil transmission fluid, it goes into the main building mm -hmm. where we have a big oil water separation system and that that fluid that is leaking gets drained and then the vehicle gets moved back to its perspective place whether it's the city of Holyoke that's usually we call for the city of Holyoke in, in West Springfield um, what we do cars that are leaking in Holyoke that aren't significant we put what's called a, what you might know as a pizza pan all <laughs> right <laughs> but it's like three inches you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. By four, by two and a half, and we put pads down, and um, we put them under the car. You know, um, I know here at this lot there's no water near it. You know, um, I know there's water down the road, but it's not close to, you know, the area. The property becomes not valuable if you contaminate it. You know what I mean? Um, so it's not something yeah. that. So we make every effort to not contaminate soil and groundwater and mm -hmm. everything. Else. Everything leaking, like you said, gets brought back to us and feel drained and then returned to general population. Um, did the uh, abutters have to be notified? Yeah, but we haven't heard anything. Have you guys reached out to Rick around at all? Or? No. Only, no, you only reached out to him about renting an apartment, right? <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of our employees. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that would be convenient. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, you know, I used to live on Florence Road, and it was it was great. You know what I mean? And, um, and I moved to Loyola from the job transfer. I used to run Kalen's um, for ten years, and then there were some changes there with ownership and things. And I've been out of there for about five years. And, Okay, any other questions from the board? So the entrance is from the uh, demo road? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. King? I just, I don't know, nobody asked about them, but I mean, someone has asked, so, yeah. But uh, about this, this residential, in the entrance, um, I tried, I'm very visual, so I have to see on the map. There is the entrance for, may I? Yep. Well, so if you are here, this this is this where like Mox is, mm -hmm. right? And River Run is down here, Mox is here. This is, you know, Damon Road comes oh, up to here. I see. So this whole area is like a big triangle, three okay. plus something acres. And this is all fenced in. Oh, is it way fenced in? In the middle, there's a, a fence separating. This is one big piece of property. Okay. There's already a fence here, right. and there's two gates. We're asking if we could use, we're just coming into this piece of property. So but how you come here through here? So we would, yes, we would come up this way. The same way lane construction would come in or out with their equipment, uh -huh. um, the same access road. You know, on the Damon Road, when we were downstairs with the building inspector, he stated that it was like Water Street, Damon Road, there was some like, you know, we've been trying to come up here for a few years. <clears throat> Actually, we wanted to buy property on up the road before um, the fish market. Um, on the left hand side we wanted to clean up but there's just a whole bunch of it's not gonna work. Um, so this was you know another thing. Um, you know. Okay. Any other comments, questions from the board? 
motion to close. Any comments from the public? Okay. Any motion to close public comment? Mark is closing. Pass the seconding. All in favor? Yeah. Opposed? Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's fine. It's now something, and I, I think that the trigger. So as I understand, we've got two conditions: one, screening on all sides with slats; two, if the size increases, if it goes beyond that, the pre-established right. gate or, or fence size, 100 by 200, that would trigger the need for another hearing. And hopefully that does happen, mm -hmm. which means you guys are being successful. So. Hopefully the city loves us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, have that in the form of a motion. Motion to approve the site plan for towed car storage by Chad Willard's wet Red's towing off Damon Road, uh, map 180, 18D-3 Northampton with the following conditions. Uh, the existing fence shall have screening on all four sides with, with slat screen. And if the size, uh, if the need is determined to go beyond the confines of the existing size of the fencing uh, that would trigger the need for another thing. Okay, second. second by Ted. All in favor? Yep. All opposed? Congratulations. That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's it. That's it. You're good to wow. go. <laughs> I believe all those terrible stories you had. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, we're not Amber. Hey, <laughs> oh, are you Are you Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your time. We look forward to working. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, adoption of the open space and recreation plan. Is there, is there a presentation? That's <laughs> quick. It would be a short presentation. Um, <laughs> the ball gun. Can we? Can we have a Because let me stop you right now. <laughs> so I subjected you to a long presentation in your last meeting. I promise I will repeat it. Um, in case you're bored, you can have a presentation for the last time. Oh no, it's okay. I promise no, I will. Maybe they're coming around. Um, this is yeah. So there's two documents there. So just I do want to tell you where we are in this process. We are actually under some time constraint. We're hoping that you're ready to act tonight. Um, we had a grant, it has been a year in the process. We had a grant that was due last week, due on Monday, um, that required us to provide the draft open space plan and we have to give the final plan as soon as possible. Um, so just quickly, I want to just highlight the main things, and you may, I was just at the Conservation Commission who's working on endorsing this. You may hear a couple of people coming over from that hearing to come talk to you as well. Um, but we held two formal public hearings. We appeared before committees in open session about 10 times. We did a rolling workshop along the bike path. We had a wiki mapping website, and friends on Hidden Trails and Greenways did a survey in our behalf. Um, so we had a lot of public input in the process. Um, with the exception of hunting, without exception, we found consensus in everything that we did, and I don't think there's anything controversial. You know, some people think we should buy more land, some people should buy less land, but no one came to a meeting saying you're not doing enough of this, you're doing too much of that piece. So hunting's really ultimately the only issue that there was disagreement. I mean, you may not like other things, but, um, and in essence, you know, this is a process that goes before eight different committees. In an ideal world, we would have built a consensus in all the committees and made a, you know, a plan recommendation to the planning, to the conservation commission, but ultimately as legal authority. But absent any, I mean, to be clear, not only was there not a consensus on what do we lack, which at least I can totally respect, there was not a consensus on the facts, right? So we all kind of disagree about what are our values, but there's really a disagreement with basic facts. And a, and a consensus building planning process just isn't the place to hammer that out. So in the end, there's one page, and I passed out the one page to you in the plan, that basically doesn't say anything more than the planning board should consider this, here's what we heard, think about all these things. So we sort of, we documented things, because I spent hours of my life on never get back in the process, um, to inform the Conservation Commission, but we don't take a position. Um, you know, early in the process, people asked me what my own position was, and what I said is, you know, I come from a bias of wanting a consensus building process. I really, I'm not a hunter, but I'm not anti -hunter. I don't really care in the slightest whether we allow hunting or don't allow it. What I was hoping is that we could hear all the voices and respect all the voices and find some compromise, and I utterly failed at that, so I apologize. So I, I mention all this only because, so this is the you know, plan of 170 pages. The 
part of the plan that really counts is 11 pages of actions. There's only 147 pages. Are we missing 30 pages? Yeah. Do you have the uh, ADA thing? I don't know, we have 147 pages. Okay, I don't remember Just which ADA. <laughs> what are you trying to hide? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have everything except I don't remember if yours include the inventory of what water fountains are accessible and what water fountains aren't accessible. I don't remember. So, I anyway, yeah. maybe it's only 146 pages. But there's only 11 pages that's really the action plan. That's the part that, you know, is significant. Um, and that, again, that's what I presented to on your last time. So there is this piece that I failed, Tonic Archimedes, and I wish I could have, but I don't think there's a lot of controversy about it. So, I'm sorry, are you finished? I'm done. Oh, okay. So <laughs> it says here adoption of the open space plan. You are, are are we the are we the final? Oh, we are. Okay. Yes. I thought we were another one in the chain, and then ultimately. well, we're not actually going in order, so we will be going to city council for endorsement. Oh, okay. But you're the only one that matters. Okay. We could have blown everybody else. We like to feel that way, right? You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because state law gives you the authority to adopt plans. Okay. And this is one of our plans. It doesn't mean anything if Constant doesn't approve it. Recreation commissions. That's why I've gone to everybody. You're the one that matters for grants. They're the ones that matter for day to day things. Okay. There's no way for me to say this without sounding like a jerk, so I just have to say it. Um, it is this going to be proofread? Because it's like yes. riddled with errors. Yes. Like not just like typos, but like keywords yes. left out. Like no, absolutely. Okay. So this was it's difficult to like adopt it when it's like oh, no, there's no. like half an action sentence that's like missing the other half. Yes. Like, what does that mean? And no, we're well over it. So, okay. so I'm never great at reading my own proof of my own stuff, but in this case, I didn't even try. So we literally okay. had a deadline <laughs> to get into this mess. <laughs> <Sorry. and> <laughs> I, my thought was this like, dragon dictation because yeah. yeah. it was yeah. like yeah. dictated. And I was like, I don't know what this is. Yeah, no, no question. Yeah. The other thing okay. I won't tell you, but some of the maps are actually maps from seven years ago where we swapped them out for recent maps. Yeah. So yes, that well, yeah, was and there's blanks on like acreage numbers, right. like stuff right. that, that yeah. That was absolutely going to grant in on time for doing it. Then we have okay. lots of time for doing this. Okay. We have a woman who's doing we have this tax write-off program who's our oh, InDesign okay. person. So, so yes, we'll yeah. do all that stuff. Great. So, so uh, uh, essentially where we came to after our long <laughs> conversation <laughs> with the folks about firearms, which was very one-sided, uh, because that's who came, is it seems like you did take kind of, I mean, I, I remember that night, we kind of ended up with kind of some big picture issues. And it seems like you've tried to incorporate those. Um, but I think you're right. Uh, I guess point number two about the community perception is polarized more. I mean, yeah, it, it's like beyond reasonable conversation at this point almost. Like you said, it's like you can't even agree. Like, where are we? A little bit. So, um, and I think, but but I think the conservation commission is a is a you know I think I think that's a viable place for it for that discussion to take place. Is that an actual mechanism? Like, I mean, if they if the conservation commission is like. Forget it. Like we just, you know, this is thorny, and we're just gonna be hands off. I mean, what, you know, if this is in here as an action plan that the conservation commission should discuss a framework, is there? There's no teeth to that, though. This right? is a plan so, that totally ignore. Yeah. I think they want to do it, but so the difference is, this is a plan that covers 36.1 square miles of the city, and at that level, it got people's imagination. Whatever side you're on, conservation commission has two ways to go forward. They could do the same thing, and I think they're going to be as frustrated as I was. Mm -hmm. Or they could have a discussion about, in Rainbow Beach, where we've had a lot of hunting for 20 years and I've never heard a complaint, is that the appropriate place? Right. I guess where to solve is X area. Right. And I think there's going to be some natural thinning out of people on both sides, mm -hmm. frankly, in the process. So I think there's a way forward in the process. But yes, they could. So what is know. their framework? Their framework just, you know, let's say they make the make a framework? Is it just a document that they propose to you or to us or city council? Like what is so the conservation the outcome of like? is authorized to pass actual regulations. Okay. They're the final voice. Yeah. So okay. they can say, they have to hold a public hearing mm -hmm. um, and they can do, as I said, one public hearing or, you know, one for every acre of land they own. But ultimately they okay. get to, to write those regulations. Okay. So that's the form that their framework would take. It would end up being some right. some city. Right so when you know when we Rainbow Beach is sandwiched between two pieces of state land, the reason it allows hunting actually wasn't a part of a grand scheme 
It's that we asked Fish and Wildlife to manage our property for us because we couldn't even get there. Yeah. And they said, sure, as long as you allow the same rules that we have, which includes hunting. Right. Um, <laughs> but so, yeah, and, and stories are different for each one. Yeah. So, so it seems like what, so what the, if I'm understanding, then what the plan is saying is, you know, just regarding hunting and firearms is there's this issue. It really belongs in a conversation with the Conservation Commission. So the plan is saying that's where it belongs. So in adopting the plan, we're not saying yay or nay. We're saying that's where that conversation belongs. And the future will be informed by that conversation that they have in that appropriate place. But we're acknowledging that that's where it belongs as part of the plan. Okay. Exactly. We're not saying yes, no, do it, don't do it. Okay. But as you said, the current issue you had two weeks ago right. is reflected. Here. Oh yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. yeah definitely. In the meantime, we can go about building bike trails and all that. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> I think it was one way Mark was. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, other questions, comments from the board. Uh, uh, what about the suggestion that you brought up? Discussion that there are these organizations want to work with, uh, get engaged in this project. Is that part of it? That's something up to the Conservation Commission, but it's strong as legitimate. Right. I mean, they have to figure no out what they want. Yeah. To engage I mean, in different activities, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, Kevin Lake, who's the Conservation Commission chair, his day job when he was working in the corporate world was consulting sometimes dysfunctional corporations. Oh. Um, and and I so I think he and, and that's not saying that he would do this, but I think he sort of he's thoughtful and thinking what's the right process to, to move them forward to get there. So that's absolutely you know one of the things they're going to look at. I don't don't really know. I mean, in the discussion we had before I came over here, they had the same conversation that endorsing this doesn't mean that they're committed to anything, but they want to have some conversation going forward. But I don't know like, what form it's going to take. And there's one other thing. There was about the maintenance of the space that you keep acquiring, and you bring them up, and then what happened after that? So I, so I addressed that. It was funny. I went back to my office, and it wasn't 100% what it had in mind, but that's OK, because I put it in two places it could have been. Yeah. So in the thing about hunting, it's represented because one of the things we heard is, if we allow hunting, people shoot up everything. There's a maintenance issue there. So I reflected there. And then generally, in terms of how we manage land, I, I had some discussion there. So we're in a much better position than we were seven years ago. A year and a half ago, the mayor authorized a half-time position for us. Um, and so we now have a person who spends 20 hours a week maintaining our conservation properties. Part of that is bricks and mortar going out and doing work. And part is developing neighborhood groups and, and more stewards for doing it. So on the conservation side, I think we're doing a better job of maintenance than ever, and we're addressing that. Um, I think there's still, and conservation is still relatively inexpensive, right? We manage 15% of the city with a half-time person. That's still an issue on the rec parks and recreation side, but at least the mayor's aware of it. So we cleaned up Plasky Park. It's a great place. It's been so heavily used. It could use a full-time maintenance person doing nothing but that. So it's certainly the agenda. The mayor certainly heard that from people. The plan certainly talks about it. But like other recommendations, the fact that we talk about it doesn't guarantee it's going to be more money. But at least we put it in the, I mean, the point of some of these things is to put it in the public agenda. That you know you can go to you know you can support DPW's budget when you ask for the maintenance person. We've documented that. We have it ready out here. So we did keep your idea of sort of making sure we document the issues. Okay. Do, do you have a particular topic you were here for, sir? I was here to make public comment. I got tied up in the conservation. On which item? You guys are going to adopt the open space plan tonight? Yes. That, that's what I would like to make comment on. And if you'll just identify yourself. Yep. My name is William Golaski. I live in the Florence section of Northampton. Um, I've been involved in the plans in the last two years, um, trying to work out the active recreation end of the plan. And I tend to think sometimes that Northampton, or the plan is narrow-minded or forgetting some of the active rec recreational um, opportunities that could happen. Um, I'm an avid hunter, fisherman, snowmobiler, ATVer. Um, 
on the last plan and this plan, I've been trying to help get that portion of active recreation increased. Um, we haven't made much headway. There's some existing motorized stuff that was there long before any of these plans came in place that's still there. There hasn't been any true, I'll say, increases to it. And then on the hunting end of it, they've been, we picked up a piece and we lost a piece. So basically, to me, that was a wash. If you look up active recreation in the dictionary, it includes motorized vehicles. It includes outdoor activities, all that type of stuff. So, like I said, I tend to think that we forget about some of that in our plan. Um, I'm going to say I'm here to throw a grain of salt underneath the big wheel. The plan in itself is a great plan, but I'm concerned about one part of it, and I just want to voice my opinion on that. Active rec recreation, increasing hunting, and things like that was approved in the last plan. It was one of the 12 components that we were supposed to work on that, truthfully, I'll say with the wash, I don't felt that we worked on it, or we, we increased any of that. Um, there was a lot of other areas with increases. Um, out of our 147 page plan, there's one item that didn't make it. And it's for future consideration hunting. 147 pages. I know the majority of it, probably 15 pages, is the true pertinent information, but 147 pages. Truthfully to me, I consider that a prejudice against my active recreation. That's why I'm here talking to you and I'm concerned about that. Um, there was many meetings. I'll say the city, and I'll, I'll put this on the city, didn't get facts. Everyone goes to the meetings and a neighbor shot my cow and they're shooting at midnight. That's not facts, you know. So when you use that to push your cows out and try to prevent things from happening, I'm concerned about that. Um, I'll make a statement and this was part, they proposed some increases which have been taken off the table. And I'll quote Wayne and I don't know if this is the exact quote, he can probably tell me. But one of the pieces was um, spoken about as a tick infested jungle that they were gonna open up the hunting. We didn't even get a tick infested jungle. I don't have a lot of hope that down the road we're going to get anything better, or even the tick infested jungle. I'm a law abiding citizen. I'm a citizen of Northampton. I lived here for 30 years. Used to hunt out my back door until the city bought it. Now I can't. And I can't go many places in the city to do that recreation. I'm told to go elsewhere. We make bike paths, we make trails. We do that type of stuff. We don't ask them to go elsewhere. I was involved in the last plan. Once again, just like this plan, I believe active recreation is mentioned in the 12 items three to four times. So obviously it was important. It was similar to that in the last plan, but we've made no headway. So truthfully, I think we failed there. I'm afraid we're failing again. Once again, I know this is a minute speck of the whole plan, but it's an important part to me, and that's why I'm here tonight. The truthfully, I'll say sickens me about the inequality of the lands that the city of Northampton owns. And to some point, they become private parks. So you can do this, you can do that, but you can't do this, you can't ride a bike, you can't go in with an ATV, you can't do that. So we're excluding a population. We're, I'm an active ATV rider, active snowmobiler. Follow the rules, buy my registration, do what I need to do, pay into the system. There's many other activities that have no fees that get to use it, and I pay fees and I get nothing. If you don't give people places to go, they're just going to go. And that's what you don't want. If you give people places to go, they're gonna go out and hopefully, just like anyone else, hikers may do the wrong things, bikers may do the wrong thing. We hope that the people in my groups don't do the wrong thing, but if we have a place to go and a place to recreate, we're just not gonna go anywhere. But if we have nothing, 
and we do it legally, you know, what do you, it's just frustrating. So those are just the points I wanted to bring up. Once again, I know the plan is 99.9% .9 solid, but that's my areas of concern. And actually, I hate to say that I don't want to see it get adopted, but in the same instance, I'm afraid if I let it get adopted, we'll go through another seven years. And the seven years really concerns me because we're not talking about a year plan. We're talking about the next seven years. So if everything gets locked into place, 2025, who knows where I'll be then, maybe sitting in a wheelchair, not being able to recreate. So I just want to bring that point out and hopefully, you know, and I'm willing as a citizen to be involved. I've told conservation areas, I've told Wayne before that I'd be more than happy to be involved and um, move things forward. Uh, I, yes. I just don't, I don't want to cut you off. I'm done. Okay, so I just want to uh, go back and we have had some conversation before we came in uh, on, on the, the plan and what Wayne and, and the city is proposing. And I will just say on, on the firearms and hunting issue, um, you know, what they are recommending is not a definitive response. It's that this, you know, identifies that this particular issue is particularly troublesome and polarizing within the city and utilizes the vehicle of the Conservation Commission for further review. So there's not a definitive, this is what's gonna happen, this is what's not gonna happen regarding hunting and firearms, you know, I, I think that it was heard, and I, I don't think you were here, but a couple few weeks ago we had, you know, we were here for three hours hearing from folks. Um, so we, it's clearly a very, you know, important issue, mm -hmm. and, and the plan seems to recommend, we need to, we need to say that this needs to be further, needs to have further, you know. Review. And I understand that, but that's what the last plan said, and that's my concern. Okay. So we went through seven years with not, I'll say, no change. change. Okay, but, so, I, but I, I just, you know. It's pretty it, scary to me. It does put it back to the Conservation yeah. Commission where it seems like it would be an appropriate place for it to have some. And I'm hoping in the future that when we purchase lands, we'll think about everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the problem and I understand that, but it, that problem can be fixed. Okay. All with right. partnerships and thought and getting the proper information. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you just, very much. Thank you. Thank Sorry, you for your time. I wish you'd be here in the last meeting that I saw. Because there was nobody about, like you supporting the gun, the, 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 the right. hunting. So well, we, that's what I, I just and I ask yeah. the folks why there is nobody like you in here, right, to make your point. And I've been to many meetings. Yeah. Most of the time, it's hard. And once again, the the plan just came out on what the six. The email that I got, I mean, we're talking the 14th, or I think it actually was even later than that, so okay, boom, you gotta spring to action. If I knew the meeting was there, I've been to many meetings, I've been involved with all the other ones, sometimes it's hard to get that information. Can I ask a question? Where does the seven year timeline come from? Is that just the way it's been done in the past, or is that? So the state creates the maximum length we can do. It used to be five years. They decided it was too much of a burden for a city to do every five years and change to seven years. We could certainly do it less often, but it just it's an expense and consumes a lot of time. So we've done the maximum good. Nothing to stop us from coming back and revisiting if we wanted to. Got it. I'm just I'm looking for a piece of my, piece of the pie that we all should have. And does um, expansion? I mean, one of the things that you seem to focus on is wanting an expansion of of uh, activities, I mean, did, well, I mean, if we if it just sort of stayed constant, would that be okay? Like what stayed constant? Like uh, ATV use, and I mean, there is some hunting, obviously, here, right. and there is some ATV use. So, until now, and Wayne can tell me if I'm wrong. Like the Jeep Beater Trail was specifically, I'll say, Jeep orientated, but now it does include ATV. Uh -huh. But from experience, and I've been doing it a long time. If you give them a one-way road up to the end and you turn around, that's when people start going off trail and going to find something different. If that road was a loop, you're less likely to have people go off trail because they're not driving up four miles and coming back the same four miles. So like in Bear Town State Forest, places like that where ATVing is legal, they have loops. And that tends to keep people on trail. So I'm on the board of directors of uh, the Snowmobile Association. We do a lot of trail maintenance, trail work. We, we want to, you know, we try to pass laws. 
for safety, OUI, that type of stuff, our association pushes that forward because we want professional people out there, you know, respecting the sport and doing the right thing so that we can continue to do it. So I think we talked about this at the last meeting, but that a lot of this is again sort of maintenance and management as opposed to policy. So yeah. the plan is about policy, not saying this trail can be ATV or this trail needs a loop road. So even, I mean, they're in the action items. They um, they're you know point three and three <laughs> are um, you know developing partnerships for. Um, Sorry for snowmobile use, and then I guess it's three and five. Um, further and, and more about ATV use. So, and then then there's hunting. So, three of the of the six, um, or uh, I think there's twelve total. But um, of these six, are about that type of active recreation <coughs> in particular. And again, it's about policy. It's at the policy level. You know this at this level, not at specific trails and how to create. <coughs> Many of you in my group are afraid to even come out to any of these meetings because they're like, you're never going to get anywhere, ever, ever, ever. I just believe that. I think you got to be here. You got to speak your piece. We can all work together. We can all come to a happy outcome. I know that. Like I said, I'm not looking to go through all of Northampton hunted, but out in the western parts where there's three houses next to 50 acres, it, it can work. And I'm willing to help make that work. So I don't, I don't want to stand here to voice my opinion. I volunteer. And, and I think it, it seems like the plan will create the opportunity to do that. I hope so. So, okay. so even with the snowmobile end of it, and I said I'm in the snowmobile club, the state of Massachusetts Fire Association does thousands of thousands of hours of trail maintenance. Um, we all get grants for trail maintenance. Actually, our last grant was $6,000 worth of power equipment for cleaning trails. So we do River Road down in Chesterfield, the Chesterfield Gorge, and the DCR will call us because they're so short-staffed and ask us if we can take care of issues down there, if there's a tree down or they need something. And I can vouch for that. I, I live near uh, Snowmobile Trail, and um, it, you, uh, people do a great job of maintaining them, so I, I can vouch for that. So, hope, I, like I said, just wanted to speak my opinion and hopefully we can move forward. Not looking for the world, just looking for a little piece of the pie that we can all get, get along together. We appreciate that. Thank you for Thank your you. time. Thank, Thank you. you. Comments uh, from the board? Or motions? Or anything? I guess I move to close the public vote. Uh, second by Tess. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. It seems like a great. Plan. I think uh, you know this. The fact that it's uh, working at this level and it's you know the employees of Northampton's job to work on the the, the nuts and bolts is you know it provides it provides Wayne with the ability to get more money to, to our city and that's what we need. Right. You know, it doesn't close any doors. It provides opportunity to continue whatever direction the city feels is appropriate yeah and I guess the, the only feedback I would have Wayne and uh, Carolyn I mean the seven I, I, you know the seven years I, I can see both sides of that I mean you know it seems like a really long time um, to come back to you know by the time you get to the end of the seven years well what did we you know I mean it is, it is kind of a long time but I could see where you don't want to be going through this effort you know from just a pragmatic standpoint every two years either um, so I guess I, mean, I, could, I can see that part of it I'm involved in, in our agency there's things that we have to do every four years every six years and you know, it's sometimes you forget like well what, what did we say we were going to do and yeah but if something like came do an amendment, though, right? yeah, but yeah or not even if something it's, came up at year four that we needed to we right to change, you, we can do that but there is a reviewing in between right revising the, the, the planning between me before the seventh year. that's right right several so things come up we can do that. That. and i agree with so you. i mean you just can't do this right yeah. isn't it's yeah. ever five years every three no you can't you just have to have a long-term goal and then you build it up and do amendments and this and that. One thing that everyone has said 
from all these different people who have come in is that everyone agrees on 99.9%. <laughs> and so in my world, I, I follow sort of an 80-20 world. And 80-20 is much, that's much lower than 99. You're way ahead there. And so if we're at 99, I feel like it's a slam dunk. Right, I mean, exactly. And, and more importantly, and I think that this is where I, I'm confident, is that when we have people like Carolyn and Wayne and this gentleman, we, we are a wonderful community that does Fortunately, we're one of the last places that doesn't seem to yell at each other all the time. There is a little bit of yelling, but it's not all the time. And I feel like we can come to some sort of conclusion uh, or some sort of agreement, maybe, uh, on the 0.1% that needs to be discussed. So I move to, to support this and to adopt it as it is. Mark seconds. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you all very much. Congratulations. Do you have minutes? Do we do, do I send you minutes? I don't think so. No, we don't. But well, you have it on your list. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have any A&R. So. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Second. Mark. All in favor? Yeah.